Hey friends, welcome back to my channel and to another video. Hi, if you're new, I'm Hannah. Oh, I forgot to put my ring light on. Maybe that's better. Um, wow, I've already forgotten what I was gonna say. I'm filming a radar video, the first one of 2023. You're in a strange setup and it feels like the ca I might be wobbling the camera. Let me just see if I can. Um, because I'm on the sofa, if you don't follow my Instagram, I've been in a bit of a health crisis and in the hospital, I'm very sick and so everything you've watched recently has been pre-recorded but I am back at home now and honestly just really in need of distraction and I thought I had already like prepped everything for this video earlier, um, sort of like even before Christmas I had this list and so I thought maybe I would sit down and try and film it for you just as something for me to do kind of thing that's like low energy and that I could you know edit and put up when I feel like it I yeah this is books that I have seen on my radar for January I know this is late which is another reason why I wanted to record it because I didn't want to leave it another week before these become sort of obsolete for the month but you guys seem to really like them and I really like recording them and I just love the mindless activity of digging around on the internet for books I'm excited for that I probably won't buy and maybe won't even read anytime soon but yeah, I just thought this would be a nice thing for me to do on this uh, weekend. So, um, without further ado, <laughs> let's get started, I guess. Um, sorry, as you can tell, I'm on a lot of medication and my brain isn't fully moving and shaking as I like it to be. But I did do my nails nice, which is my number one favourite coping mechanism. I was chatting to a friend about this last night. I've been doing a lot of Sudoku and I've been doing my nails, which... I do gel nails at home but it's so it's not even that I like having them done but just the process of doing them I find so soothing so yes I redid my nails and they were looking so grim and chipped um like well I've been really unwell so that was a nice task um anyway first book I'm excited for is called The Collective Works by Lydia Sangrin and it's translated from the Swedish and it's being published in this is the stateside copy by Astra House but I'm pretty sure it's coming out in lots of different places and it sold over 100,000 copies in Sweden and it won a big prize over there and it sounds excuse me very interesting so it says it's a compelling mystery um, for readers of Night's Guard, which is interesting, never read any of him myself, but um, it's a novel about love, power and art and what leads us to make the pivotal decisions that change our lives. So it follows Martin Berger's wife, Cecilia, disappeared years before. His memories of their carefree college days seem out of reach and the intellectual curiosities that made him the object of her desire has given way to midlife uncertainty. The methodical and quiet life he's made for himself and his adult children couldn't be further than the one he dreamed from in his youth. When the manuscripts lying around his apartment were flush with promise and publishing houses were new. Perhaps nothing reminds him more of these failures than his friend Gustav, a wildly successful painter who returned to Gothenburg on the eve of his career-defining retrospective. But he is hurting too. His obsession with Cecilia's disappearance has made his art has, has had her fixation on his art and the posters from the retrospective plaster Cecilia's face all around the city. Her daughter learns about a secret fact that points to his mother's whereabouts. His brother, her and her brother chase down the queues and head across Europe to find out why Cecilia abandoned her family. This is very fitting because right now I'm reading a Norwegian translation, a book called Is Mother Dead, which is all about art and estrangement of family, not necessarily disappearance, but sort of purposeful um, departure from a comfortable family setup. And this sounds like a really similar comparison in that kind of thing. And I love books about visual art and artists. And I think this one with that element of mystery sounds really good. And I've also read a couple of books in January so far that have had that mystery element and slightly more plotty. And I've really been enjoying that. And I think this year, if you watched my 23 and 23, I put a couple of books on that list that are slightly more out of my comfort zone as less character study and more sort of um, driven by a plot or some kind of uh, puzzle that must be solved. So I'm very interested in those kind of books, I think, and they're appealing to me at the moment. So yeah, let me know if you've read this one either in its native language or if you're planning on picking up a translation of it. Um, the next one I heard about from my friend Hux over on Instagram, um, their username is, 
I can't remember, but I'll link it there. And also they write middle grade books, but we're good friends. I saw that they either blurbed or reviewed this somewhere and it's called The Things We Do To Our Friends by Heather Darwent. Um, I hate the cover because I hate snakes so much. Even though this snake is like objectively very beautiful, it just gives me the creeps. Um, this again is like a suspenseful dark sort of novel and it's set at the Uni of Edinburgh and it says Claire arrives with a secret to the University of Edinburgh, but this is her chance for a blank slate to be who she was always meant to be. But then she meets Tabitha, beautiful, charismatic and intimidatingly rich, go figure for Edinburgh. Um, she sucks into her enigmatic climate circle of friends and the dizzying world of champagne on rooftops and summers in France. Her new life begins, but then Claire can't say no to Tabitha's new project because they know what she did. Love a dark secret, coming of age, university life. Sounds like it could be interesting. Slightly iffy that it's described as a feminist page turner. I don't really like when contemporary literature tries too hard at those things. It's comp titles are the secret history and promising young women, which again, interesting. And yeah, I do like a campus novel, a university novel. Perhaps this is leaning into the ongoing trend of dark academia, but this is published on the 12th by um penguin if i didn't i don't remember if i said that when the last one was coming out but it's out on the 31st of january number three is the guest lecture by martin Riker. this is published by grove atlantic and it's out on the 24th i really enjoy the cover of this i love the colors and it really looks like very marrakesh to me these color schemes and the staircase and the little moon but um this set is set in this is another like academic themed novel and it says abby is a young feminist again uh, economist she lies awake in her bed next to her sleeping husband and daughter anxious that she's grossly unprepared for the talk she must give tomorrow on optimism and john maynard Keynes. she's resolved to practice by using an ancient rhetorical method of assigning parts of her speech to different rooms of her house. Oh, I've read a lot about doing that um, as a like memorization technique. And she's brought along a comforting, all but imaginary companion to keep herself on track. She wanders with increasing alarm through the rooms of her own consciousness and she finds herself straying from the prepared remarks of economic history, utopia and Keynes's pragmatic optimism. She's a lapsed optimist herself, struggling to support her family in hostile America, where she's denied tenure track at her university. She confronts her future and undertakes the quest through her memories to discover a piecemeal intellectual history through... Lewis Carroll to Queen Latifah, she asks what a better world will look like. So this sounds it's going to be quite meta and um, philosophically driven in the context of a not a novel, like sort of a story within a story, I guess, because she set up this metaphorical room in order to like pursue something practical, giving this talk. But these rooms that she's created, I'm sure are going to take on something else in the book. So, yeah, it sounds quite thinky, um, but perhaps also a depressed women moving in some ways we might see. So keen to read this one, definitely not in the mood for it right now with the way the state of my brain, but I um, would be interested in if other people are reading this because it sounds like it might be, um, yeah, quite complex in an interesting way. Next up, we have a short story collection out with from Patricia Engel, which I'm so excited about and like annoyed at myself I didn't request this um, because I didn't even realise it was coming out. Patricia Engel wrote um, Infinite Country, which I read sort of spring last year and Tom and I both adored that book. It was the story of sort of Columbia, young girlhood, um, escape, had this sort of like... Um, detachment from family and conversations about um, sort of the American-Mexico border and really, really, really enjoyed that book. So I'm intrigued to read her short story. So this is called The Faraway World. And it says it talks about the same sort of themes, moral compromise, migration, sacrifice, and it's set across the Americas. Two Colombian expats meet strangers on rainy streets of New York, both burdened with their traumatic past. In Cuba, a, a boy, a woman discovers her brother's deceased bones have been stolen and the love of her life returns to Ecuador for just a one night visit um, an arresting collection of stories so yeah this sounds so good if I see this in my bookshop in Amsterdam after I've stopped purchasing books in January I will um, definitely pick this one up because I'm excited to read more from Patricia Engel I loved her writing style so much 
Uh, next up is another short story collection that I heard about from my friend Jay and I did start to read the first couple of pages but it was quite involved the writing style and it just wasn't for me at the time but I am really keen to get to this this is called Stories from the Tenants Downstairs and it's published by John Murray Press in the UK and it came comes out on the 19th of uh, January and so it follows a apartment block in New York I believe so it says the bank here Terrace on 29th and Fred Doug isn't pretty, but it's home to, to young and old folk just trying to get by. Cookouts with beer, wings, summertime, souped up cars, bumping music, and people come here, don't come here for the bad, they come here to try and make a good life. So I think it follows all the different um, apartment, like uh, build it, all the different apartments in the building and has that interconnected storyline of characters reappearing and it's told in quite a, um, yeah, set in Harlem and it's told in quite a, stylized um voice which is really interesting and i think it will be really excellent i know my friend jay really really adored it so i definitely want to get to this one when i feel i can i feel like to read in dialect sometimes or even just like an americanized voice is um or anything other than your own voice that you know is quite uh you know a commitment to get involved with i know it's like when i read what it feels like for a girl by Paris Lees. I love that book so much, but so many people message me to say they couldn't get on board with the dialect, which I do understand it takes a certain sort of involvement to do that. So yeah, I haven't picked that one up yet, but I am excited too. A novel that I think is very buzzy, I was also chatting to Jay about and we were like, it's potentially going to be quite a prize nominated book this year and it's the age of vice this is out on or just came out on the third i did get an audio arc of it but it's like 19 hours long and i haven't been in the mood to commit to something that long but it's set in new delhi and it's about like elitism and journalism it sounds like the kind of book i would love and also the kind of book my mum would love it's 560 pages though so definitely one for when you've got more time on your hands and it's not even time because right now i have time on my hands i'm so unwell that i'm not really working but it's time sort of where you want to commit to that whole book and you don't get that satisfaction of finishing something and I feel like I need my brain needs that satisfaction of sort of clocking through a few short books at the moment to keep myself on the reading train so yeah I do want to read this one my mum could definitely devour this on like as I said before she's such a greedy reader she could read this on a an eight hour plane or a 24 hours on a sun lounger so perhaps I'll purchase it for her and then um take back the copy so I'll just read you the um blurb it says New Delhi 3am a speeding Mercedes jumps to the curb and in a blink of an eye five people are dead it's a rich man's car but when the dust settles there is no rich man at all a shell-shocked servant who cannot explain these strange series of events that led to this crime nor can he foresee the dark drama ahead of him it sh th shifts through time and perspective in contemporary india an epic story of action packed propelled by seductive wealth corruption bloodthirsty violence and a family that is loved by some and loathed by others but feared by all part crime thriller part family saga taking Readers from dusty villages to urban energy, a story of gangsters, love, friendship, romance, and the consequences of corruption. Just sounds like so my kind of book. I love a super involved family saga. I love stories written about India, particularly contemporary India. And um, it reminds me of Kidnap the Rich, it sounds a bit like, which was a um, like fast paced uh, Indian semi thriller story that I read that was like quite satirical and funny last year or the year before last that was um, also set in India and about like the academic um, industry around rich kids needing to pass exams but ends up in like a double triple cross kidnapping and I loved that book and I think um, the vibrancy of the cities like Delhi really bring themselves like are really well suited to these kinds of fast paced stories so yeah I'm keen to read this one when I have the chance I also think I will be able to get a copy here in the Netherlands I'll be able to get an export paperback because it because it sounds like such a chunky book it's not what I would want to pick up in hardback but luckily living in Europe <clears throat> we get so many of our hardback editions you pay the same price for them but they're published as paperbacks but like big ones um and they're very floppy so I will probably seek out a floppy version if I am to buy it Okay, on to non-fiction. This book sounds super interesting by Joanna um, Woolfarth and it's called Milk, an Intimate History of Breastfeeding. It's out on the 19th and it's published by Orion and as the title suggests, it's a history of breastfeeding. But it says that um, she is a cultural historian and also a mother. So I'm imagining it's going to blend some of the personal. It says it uses the arc of her own experience to take an intimate journey 
beyond discovery of mother and baby asking how the world views caregivers, their bodies, their labour and their communal bonds. It looks at art, social history, philosophy, folk wisdom and contemporary interviews from women across the world. Disappointing to say that they're constantly referring to this as women, obviously more than cis women um, chest feed their children. But um, yeah, I think it is interesting. And obviously breastfeeding is such a contentious topic within parenting and people still to this day have so many opinions on fed is best or formula and there's obviously a lot of history tied up with formula um in terms of like racial experiences of motherhood and stuff like that so i hope it touches on sort of yeah that kind of stuff as well but it sounds like it might be quite mother focused which again is questioning considering what we're moving towards when we talk about inclusive pregnancy and parenthood but nonetheless an interesting title and i really enjoy the cover Okay, I think this is another um, short story collection. No, perhaps. Yeah, it's, it's interconnected short stories. My favourite kind of short stories. This is called Jollof Rice and Other Revolutions. Did I see this on my friend Doz's list? Or is did I see it and then think I should message Doz about this? I can't remember which one. Doz, if you're watching, let me know. But this says, it follows three girls who form an unbreakable bond at a Nigerian boarding school where they meet for the first time in the middle of a riot. The uprising triggers a chain of unforeseen events that forever altered their lives as I just mentioned I'm really into or everyone I feel like or most people love a good um academic boarding school setting or just like some kind of school campus setting so this is a set of interconnecting stories that traverses different voices through Nigeria and the states to have a window to past present and future generations of Nigerian women we meet um a mother whose life was irre irre irrevocably altered by the fallout of the school riots and we see another grapple with the world outside of Nigeria after she falls in love with an African-American man. We meet a future husband in the Bronx as he becomes entangled with the police and a sense of guilt happens over the night of the riots which haunts one woman forever. Yeah super interesting setting and like I say also blurred by Roxanne Gay so we're obviously going to enjoy it um, but yeah sounds like an interesting one. Lots of short stories coming out in um, January. Um, okay, and then this one is published, I want to say, yeah, this is um, The Things That We Lost, and this won the Murky Books New Writer Prize, which is a prize I love, and Murky Books is a imprint that I really adore. They um, published We Were All Birds of Uganda, and um, one of my brilliant friends, Monica, was published by them, their poetry, and I think, yeah, they just put out some of the best... Um, British writing from um, marginalised groups and I think you know they're doing such an amazing thing so I'll always want to pick up whoever wins that prize because I think yeah they vet their contestants really well and sort of the the calibre of the work that comes out of these debuts is always really excellent. So this has, um, Nick has a lot of questions about his late father but he knows better than to ask his mother, that's an unspoken rule. When his grandfather dies, Nick has the opportunity to learn about the man he never met. He's armed with a key and new knowledge about his parents' past. He sets out to find the secrets that his mother's been holding on to. It sounds like a family saga that traces back a history of one member of the family who perhaps was estranged. And I think it traces them back to their life outside of the UK and understanding sort of uh, migration and experience of moving, which, yeah, I think it's going to be... Just like I say, I don't really need to know much about it. I will just buy into a Murky Books book because I think what they put out is always really excellent. Um, okay, this is a book out with Hachette, but I think it's originally Canadian, I want to say. This is called All the Things They Said We Couldn't Have, Stories of Trans Joy. And this is um, a collection of uplifting, generously, beautifully crafted vignettes that lead you through the cycle of the seasons, beginning in autumn, shedding the leaves and identity to the darkness of winter and the reality of daily life to spring with newness and change and ending in the joy of summer days, being out and proud. It invites you to find similar moments in joy in your life. These stories are a reminder of the power joy can bring you. So this sounds beautiful and as the title and sort of the the stance of the book suggests we need more joy coming from um, or allowed to be publicised from people who are trans because of, you know, the continuing and aggressive hatred that this group are constantly bombarded with both in the UK and in other countries. And I think this sounds like a brilliant sort of uh, resistance towards that. And I love the idea of this being set through the seasons and sort of adopting that 
that idea of slowness in the winter and coming out of your shell in the summer and that sounds beautiful and yeah really really intrigued to read that one okay we're coming up to the last one that's very buzzy that i've heard a lot of people talking about it's called really good actually by monica heisey i think this is um being talked about so much because she's a screenwriter for Shit's Creek, which I'm not gonna lie, I think is a terrible TV show, but um, nonetheless, this does sound really interesting. It's about a young divorcee post breakup trying to find themselves. Sounds like it's gonna be quite satirical and sort of self hatred y, but in a funny way. Ma uh, Maggie's marriage has ended 600 days after, 608 days after it started. She's fine, actually, really good. She's alone for the first time, can't afford her rent and her obscure PhD is going nowhere. But at 29, she wants to embrace the status as a surprisingly young divorcee. She starts sadness hobbies, gets back out there, overshares in the group chat and drinks with her intense new divorce friend, Amy. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be quite funny, I hope. But like I say, I don't personally find the humour in Shit's Creek my kind of humour. So I'm not sure if this will be sort of too self-eviscerating in a way that I don't sort of find intelligent enough but nonetheless I've seen a lot of people really love it one of my friends on bookstagram who's going through a breakup then read a proof of this and said it was like really amazing experience so I can see its purpose for that and young divorces is not really a topic that goes into much detail um I think in literature so yeah sounds sounds interesting we'll wait for more reviews to come in and won't definitely won't picking it up very soon but very intrigued very striking cover is out on the 17th it's published by harper collins in the uk harper collins in the uk are not on strike but if you are stateside the harper collins union are on strike and continue to be i think this is coming on three months now for better pay and work conditions i will link leave the link below to go and see how you can support them because it is truly unacceptable the treatment that they are receiving um but just to be clear that's not the conversation going on in british publishing right now so i think from my understanding it's okay to talk about books published by british harper collins but i thought i would just flag that for you anyway um in terms of much more ethical publications i would suggest this is out with an indie daunt books is one of my favorites this is called kick the latch and it's a super short um novella talking about horse racing i sent a copy of this to my mum because my mum's super into or was sort of more in her earlier life into horses and now it's very much sort of in that world and I think she will find this super fascinating I will definitely be reading this after her and be picking it up because she has that interest and so does other people in my life but I don't I've heard from lots of people who aren't into horse racing that this is just really beautifully constructed and an interesting novella into one character's experience on the racetrack and within the context of sort of being raised around that so yeah definitely one I think will be one of those like unanimous books that appeals to lots of people despite having a really niche topic which I think takes such skill and artistry from an author to produce something like that and I'm definitely keen to read it plus it's 96 pages long so how even if I don't enjoy it that's you know no skin off my nose to read something that short and that is all of the books I am excited for in January let me know if there's any other releases that um you're excited for and if any of these are on your radar to read and I will see you all in the next one bye, bye.